Hello everyone. This video aims to explain in the simplest way why the starting current in asynchronous or induction motors is high and how common starting methods, such as using a soft starter, a star delta starter, or a VFD, variable frequency drive, can significantly reduce the starting current in these motors. First, let's explain that the structure of an induction motor resembles that of a transformer. To understand why an induction motor behaves like a transformer, consider that the stator winding is magnetically coupled with the rotor. When the motor operates, the stator induces an electromagnetic field in the rotor. The stator functions like the primary winding and the rotor acts as the secondary. A key difference between a transformer and an induction machine is that the rotor or secondary side in an induction machine is short-circuited. With this in mind, consider a coil with an applied AC voltage. The resulting flux in the coil depends on the applied voltage and frequency. Now, consider a single-turn coil with an open end placed near this coil. Due to the alternating nature of the voltage and magnetic flux, a voltage is induced in this loop. The induced voltage depends on the flux, its rate of change, and its frequency. If we increase the frequency or the input voltage, a higher voltage will be induced. Now, if we close this loop, a current flows through it depending on the induced voltage. Before the secondary loop is closed, the primary coil's current depends only on the flux it produces. However, once the secondary loop is closed, the primary coil's current is influenced by two factors. The leakage flux, which does not pass through the secondary, and the linkage flux, which induces current in the secondary. According to transformer principles, the current flow in the secondary also causes current flow in the primary. Now, let's consider the stator of an induction motor. When connected to a three-phase voltage, the stator generates a rotating magnetic field. To see how this rotating field is generated, watch the video linked above. The speed of the rotating magnetic field generated by the stator depends on the three-phase source frequency. Now, we place the rotor inside the stator. For better visualization of field lines and currents, we'll make the stator invisible. Here, we assume the rotor is squirrel cage type, though the same principles applies to wound rotors. As soon as the rotating field creates, the rotor gradually starts moving. You'll notice that when the rotor's speed is low, the bar currents are high, but as the rotor speeds up, the currents become lower. Now, let's relate the rotor's initial conditions to the explanation at the start of this video. The rotor bars act like short-circuited loops, and the induced voltage in them depends on the amplitude and speed of rotating magnetic field. When the rotor is stationary, the rotating field moves at its maximum frequency relative to the rotor, causing the maximum possible current in the rotor bars. If the rotor were locked in place, it would experience maximum induced voltage, which is why starting current is also called locked rotor current. However, as the rotor starts rotating, it senses a lower frequency or slower flux change, gradually reducing the current. As mentioned at the beginning, the rotor behaves like a transformer secondary and the stator like a primary. The rotor current appears proportionally in the stator, which is why the stator's starting current can reach up to seven or eight times the rated current. To see how an induction motor achieves rotational movement, watch the linked video. Finally, let's examine why starting methods like star delta, soft starters, and VFDs reduce starting current. Starting current depends on two factors, flux magnitude and the rate of flux change. Flux magnitude can be adjusted by controlling the input voltage and the rate of flux change by controlling the source frequency. In star delta and soft starter methods, reducing the input voltage reduces the starting flux, though the source frequency remains unchanged. The VFD method allows control over both input voltage and frequency, reducing both parameters during startup 
according to the VFD's control mode. Of course, using these starting methods requires studying the motor's mechanical load. In upcoming videos, we'll cover induction motor starting methods in more detail. We hope you enjoy this video. Please share your thoughts in the comments. Support us by liking and subscribing to the channel. See you in the next video and goodbye for now.